Excellent. Uh, this is Peggy Hoffman coming to you from Columbia, Maryland. Super excited to be here with our first official of um, uh, webinars in our 2024 Chapter Academy lineup. So those of you that are with us on the quick um, on the quick uh, uh, update uh, last month to learn a little bit more about how we were going to run things this year, knew and uh, without any prompting that we were going to have these four webinars. Delighted to see you. We did send you uh, calendar notices for all of them. So the neat thing about the Chapter Academy um, is that we really are allowing the learning to happen over several sessions rather than just sort of like opening up your brain and dumping everything in in one in one intensive it allows us to give you some time to process the other really super cool thing about this is not everybody can come we understand not everybody can come to the big event in Houston but all of your board members are invited to every one of the webinars so please make sure that they're going to come and speaking of which let's find out how many of you are going to be coming to join us? And let's go with a yes, no, or I'm not sure. A yes, no, or I'm not sure. Oh, I love it. Um, uh, Dorita's right there going, me, I'm coming. I love that. So just let us know, is it a yes, is it a no, is it a not sure? And if it's a not sure, feel free to, to connect to um, Jennifer or Caitlin and, um, and ask any questions if you're not sure about that. I'm glad that, be quick, and I love that the fact that you have your um, name listed as be quick um, will we'll be there. That is, that, is, that is awesome. That is too, too awesome. Um, anyway, let's see how many of you are going to be here so far. You guys are very quick on the draw today. Very okay. good. Okay. I've got all of you. Uh, yeah, all of you are in. So let's show you that. I love the fact that we've got a large chunk of folks coming, but I really want to just say a quick hello to those of you who are not coming, but you came to this for conversation. And if you're not sure, we'll help you out there. We'll, we promise to help you out there. So here you go. Yes, the yeses have it, but the noes we're delighted to see. Okay. So what I'd like to do now is because this is a series, not simply the Houston gig, I'd like you to put in chat, what issue or topic would you like to learn more about or discuss more in Houston or our webinar series? So in other words, we've got three more webinars after this. And um, we have decided on, um, and we'll tell you a little bit later, uh, just shortly, what number two's topic is, but we have two openings for additional topics. So love to find out what you're interested in. Ah, Trudy's right on top here, supplier partnerships. Big issue and how that has changed, am I right? Yeah, so keep them coming. How to get members involved in the chapter. Stephanie, thank you. Marge, I love this. Cost-effective ways, uh, gaining participation from younger members. Excellent. Keep them coming. So part of what we're trying to do is really create learning opportunities that meet your needs. Now, while we're doing this, we'd like to tie what you need with obviously with what your goals are. So let me go ahead and put up a second poll. And what I'd love to find out from you at this point is... What is your chapter's big goal this year? What is your chapter's big goal? And I put a number of goals down here that are um, that are pretty typical, including uh, the the all the catch all something else, which I want you then to add into chat. But I went here and I said I, we just want to grow membership. Maybe it's a focus on retention. Maybe it's a focus on member engagement. Maybe it's a there's a specific event you have that you're really looking at. Maybe it's something new, or maybe it's this age-old problem of volunteerism. So go ahead and let us know what uh, what's your goal this year. What's what's your big goal? Now you might remember some of you who, if you had, if you happen to have been with us in some previous webinars, we always tell you you want fewer goals, not more goals. Um, and oftentimes there's a particular goal that, if met, will trigger others. So, for example, deepen member engagement will have an impact on volunteerism, and it will have an impact on retention. And it will have an impact on growing membership. So sometimes a goal can get you to many secondary goals. 
a 20th year anniversary. Oh my gosh, that is excellent. 20 years. That's beautiful. Um, and I see that Ginny said that she, they just did it. So I need the two of you to take each other's names down and, and have a conversation around that. So excellent. Um, coming in, I know you guys are thinking about this. Some of you are new -er, probably to the board. So maybe you haven't had the board conversation yet. But let's go ahead and, oh, we know each other very well. I should have assumed that. <laughs> um, I love that, um, is it, uh, Haney has said that they, uh, membership engagement and establishing the website. I'll put a little plug in here. I don't know if you're already working with Jennifer and the team there on that one. Oh, good. She's giving up. Yeah, I'm delighted to hear that. Popcorn is slowing down. Well, I guess I have to say that I'm really excited to see that so many of you have a, a key goal around deepening member engagement. We are going to spend some time in Houston and some time today talking about that. Um, and I love the Grow membership because there's a great opportunity out there, but we have to change our tactics. Uh, build volunteerism, or create something new, build a specific event. Now, if you put build a specific event, I'm guessing one of those individuals is the 20 year anniversary. But if you're looking at building a special e event or a specific event, rather, um, go ahead, sit and chat what that event is. And let's see if we can get you some help right away and chat some some people thinking um, and coordinating with each other a little bit. A mentoring program. Good. Thank you, Rosalind, for getting jumping right in there. I love that. Um, so part of these webinars, I know they're webinars. I know that most of you are not on video. I know that you're probably multitasking, but this is your opportunity to help mine some new ideas. So feel free to, uh, to, to state what you need, state what you need in chat so we can make the connections for you. 35th anniversary for your spring conference. That's a great milestone. Excellent. Let me share the results now. So just so you can see, how you and your colleagues have a lot in in um a lot in uh in 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 the <laughs> same. <laughs> um, so let me go ahead and stop that share, and I want to remind us as we get ready to get to get deeper into this program that the learning will include um, three additional webinars. This is my quick little plug before you all start escaping at the end. The 13th is super exciting because it is going to be how to build your leadership boot camp. Give me a high five on that, folks. Give me some emojis. Is that great? I'm just telling you, that's going to be that. And the March and the April ones will be picked as we as we have an opportunity to talk with you. Great. Love this. All right. So Today's focus is, I don't want to say it's on filling out your dashboard, but it is on the dashboard as a tool. And we're going to look at member engagement light in particular. But we would like to know, because some of you um, are new to this game around the chapter dashboard. Some of you have done it year, last year and you know what your results are, but you're going to start every year as an opportunity for you to do the couple of steps to get it filled out. What steps do you have Oh, excuse me, what questions do you have about the chapter dashboard as we get started? Part of what we want to do is to make sure, as always, part of what we want to do is make sure is that we answer the questions that are on your mind. So go ahead in chat and allow, the, allow this question to be answered at any time so we can jump in and help you. So what questions do you have about the dashboard? Oh, thank you, Caitlin. You just put the link into chat. This is excellent. Um, and Stephanie, the, uh, the you will find it at that link and we'll tell you a little bit about it right now. So at the core of helping chapters um, really build the success that you envision for your own, or your own um, chapter organization, is a tool we call the chapter dashboard. Some of you know about this. And so what I'd love to do is do a uh, quick look at what it is. And then we're going to come back and look at one specific pillar. So essentially, the chapter dashboard is a performance um, benchmarking tool in four pillars that we know are that are that drive success for chapters. Leadership, operations, member involvement or member engagement, and member services. 
So four areas that you all spend a lot of time thinking about and trying to find good answers for are the pillars that we look at for performance. And it's a beautiful tie-in, of course, to your awards program as well. So at the opening gate of this, if you will, you have an opportunity when you open up your dashboard to go ahead and put in some very simple information about size, number of dual members, retention rate, a couple of those things, which allow you to sort of set, sit back and say, where is my chapter today? Then you're gonna go in and be led, guided, in fact, by some questions to fill out where your performance is specifically on those four areas. The questions that you're going to ask, some of them you will know the answers and some of them you will not know the answers. And that's really okay. Part of this tool is to help you know what questions to be asking to help you create the success. Once it is filled out, it then in the back end of this Wally really Cool platform, um, you get a, a color, a light. You get the lights, the blue or turquoisey blue is going to be meaning you're at risk, which means that there is a, there's a real, op real opportunity and an important opportunity for you to go ahead and address an area of risk. Yellow is caution, which I like to say is canary. A yellow is to say, you, you know, yellow is to say, there are some things going on right and there's some things that are an opportunity. Sustaining means you are meeting what the industry stats tell us are effective um, effective metrics for your for your organization. So it has to do with your um, your your develop your your um, new member numbers, your retention numbers, your engagement numbers, your activity, and your member satisfaction. Purple is high performing, like you hit it out of the park. Now, what's neat is you get a color for each of these four categories. So we don't sit here and say, oh, you're a purple or you're a green and, and sort of equalize the things. No, we want to help you be able to decide where to apply your own resources and times. So last year, when we did the analysis, it was really kind of cool. When we did the analysis, we found out that there was a lot of commonality across the system. So there was a lot of opportunities for, for um, really for improvement. Uh, what I think is really cool is that only five of the 34 actually were high performing across all metrics. Everybody else has an opportunity for some change. And in fact, what was interesting about those five, uh, excuse me, the couple that were, that had green or purple in all three, if they had a weakness, it was in member involvement. And you can see from here, that the big ouches is member involvement. And that actually leads into how sustainable your leadership is over time. And a large part of that is driven by how effective are your operations. And of course, member services is how people uh, dip, dip into the, um, the value proposition. But because member involvement is a, is a, is a touchy spot for so many of us, I want to help you understand how you can use the dashboard. And I want to take a look specifically at the member involvement pillar. So how many chapters? Uh, James, uh, Jennifer's going to answer that question. I believe she said 34, but I'm going to let her answer it. Yep, 34. Um, so 13 of the 34. 13, uh, yes, thank you, Jennifer. See, do you see the qualifier? 34 completed last year, okay. 13 of the 34 had a, a yellow in that member involvement. No, I'm sorry, 13, here we go. 13 had a green or a purple. Everybody else had the yellow. Let me get it, my, my numbers right. So let's take a look at what this pillar is about. And then let's look at how you use a dashboard to take that yellow and move it into a green or a purple. So what we're looking for, the metric for member involvement is high member engagement. And essentially we're saying that because it, it translates to retention, to acquisition and, and to awareness. The yellow, I think is really cool because the yellow is our canary in the mine, right? It really helps us identify 
uh, where we have some opportunities to change. Now, like I said, a yellow does not mean you're ready to fall off the cliff. It just means that there's an opportunity. So let's take a look at the seven steps for using this tool. And when we do, I have to thank a big round of applause. I'm not sure if anyone from Arkansas is on, but they allowed me to pull some of their responses under this. And it really helps us take a look at how a chapter can, can fill out and then use what they have filled out to be able to create success. Step number one, as I am sure you can imagine, is review and fill in your dashboard. Now, couple of caveats I want to make sure you're very clear about. This is not a solo activity. Am I right, Jennifer? Yes. It's really much better if this is a this is a um, team approach. And Jennifer, um, share with them how the team can all be involved in actually getting information in in terms of logins. Sure. So what we're asking is that while you are attending, being the person attending Academy, is that you as the attendee will log in with that link that Caitlin shared. Um, and create an account at your NIGP login. So you will have access. You can actually allow others to access the dashboard as well. But what we want you to do is you to be that go-to person, but you can export that um, dashboard and take it to a board meeting and for you all to fill it out as a group. Like Peggy says, this is not um, just Trent's uh, obligation to fill out and know all the detail. Because I think what's so important is that for you to be able to use the data, to answer the questions, um, to look at the results and make decisions going forward, you want to make them together as a board. So while you may be attending Academy, the dashboard is really a tool for your entire board leadership to use. So I encourage you to be the one to log in, download it, and at your next board meeting, go through it. Answer the questions once I score it. I'll let you know, download it again, and then have another board, morning, board meeting and say, okay, these are the areas that we did really well in, or these are the areas that we got that caution and we need to look at what kind of things do we want to do this year and implement to change that needle. Yeah. So Stephanie's asking a good question, Jennifer. She wants to know, does the tool have to be completed by the leadership summit? No, it does not. So this is not something that we are asking in the next three weeks needs to be done. Right. We, do, we do think that to do it sooner than later, especially if you want to look at those things for the, the next year. So I would say over the next couple months, take the time to download it, meet with your board. This is a tool that you are all going to use. We do ask that you try to complete it by June is when we actually download it. So we have that data, Peggy and I, looked at that data really closely to build the program for this year. So we knew where those weak points are. But I would say try to do it in the next couple months because that gives you time to come to these webinars, to learn some tools and implement some things that maybe in those caution areas you all can use going forward this year. Good question. Yeah, excellent question. And I think the other thing I wanted to lift up that in your in your um, description, Jennifer, is that their their um, chapter ambassadors, all the chapter ambassadors have been um, has been educated on this, and so your your board could say to the chapter ambassador, "Hey, help us walk through this," and I, I, that will make a big that could make a big difference. But also Jennifer and um, staff at NIGP are available as well. Absolutely, and I think the other um, unique thing about the dashboards is once they are complete. Um, when an ambassador comes to do a visit or we do some one-on-one -on -one chats with your chapter, we will have access to that data. So we can talk about those specific areas, the SME program, we're going to kind of plug that. We're going to talk about that later for those areas that may be pain points for you that we can get some one-on-one -on -one, um, activity. But yes, your ambassadors have access to those and you can use them and myself and Caitlin to help support you in those tools or things that you need um, from your dashboard. And then um, Nicole's asking a good question also. I love these questions, guys. Keep them coming. Um, does the data we provide need to be with last year's chap chapter data? 
No, great question. So we want you to fill out a new dashboard each year. And what is going to be exciting about that is that as a board, you are going to be able to see, and if you don't have access to the last two years, Caitlin and I can pull those for you. You're going to be able to see year after year what your dashboard looked like. And did you make those progresses or to look and say, hey, guys, for three years, we keep getting yellow here. We're not moving that needle. We need to focus our area there. So um, I think it's going to be a great tool for planning for a board is to look at it year after year of a new one. Have things changed within your chapter? OK, great. And I love the because we can't talk about this data collection without giving a, um, a, a shout out to the Club Express because some of the information gets much easier when you've when you've gone on the Club Express and you do have an automatic dashboard that helps give your board regular information, which is really cool. I just noticed that I saw that it looks like um, New York and PPAC both are and are um, doing the tap the the uh the moving to Club Express and and there is a connection to all of this it really does really does work and we're actually all looking at sort of the same questions the 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 nice thing about the uh the the dashboard tool is that there's not a judgment on this right we're going to ask you questions that help you see according to effective practice this is where it'd be best for you to be if you're here, that's okay. We're going to ask you a lot of questions to help you understand why you are there. Yep. Um, and, Peggy, can, and can I just make one to a differentiation a little bit too? So those that are on Club Express, they have something called a dashboard as well. Right. So and that's different. two different names here. So I want to make sure we're clear on that. And there's a dashboard within Club Express that shows specific data. And then there's this chapter dashboard. I will tell you um, Peggy has access to what the Club Express dashboard looks like, and we are looking at the possibility of customizing or the ability to Club Express with some things that we think are relevant that should be showing up on your Club Express dashboard that relate to this dashboard as well. So that's stuff that we're working on. And as we get more chapters on board, we'll make that more um, relevant as well. Yep. But just know there are two different dashboards. I just want to make sure that there's an understanding of that. So Had we'll we known, that. we would have called the dashboard, the chapter dashboard tool something different. Like, I don't know making performance easy or something. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So what I loved about this is Arkansas was one of them of those 34 chapters who took the time to go through this process and grace and great, uh, gratefully allowed us to show. So when they did their member involvement, they got a yellow. That's one reason why I want to show. Now you can see that they pick scenario B. So the first question you get is a scenario A, B, or C. And A will be always equated to meeting all of the, the effective uh, chapter benchmarks. B will be missing some, and C will be missing many, right? So B is, a, is actually pretty good. B is saying um, that, uh, you know, that a lot of things, a lot of things were going pretty close to right. Now, you'll see that the part of the question that gave them the yellow was less than one third of the members participate regularly. We could use more help, right? And we lag behind the national retention rate. All legitimate things. And a lot of our, a lot of us in the, um, in the association chapter space see this. Um, I, I do I appreciate their honesty here and they are lagging um, uh, by a little bit more than 20% uh, in retention. So they have a great opportunity to really think about member involvement, which is going to make a huge difference, uh, huge difference for that. Um, I do think though, and this is part of the questions, which I think are really valuable, is 25% of their members qualify as new pros, which means that they are bringing folks in, which I think is really cool. The one thing that I think could be really useful is that they don't collect stats on member involvement. A lot of you don't collect stats. It's not that easy and you do have to think it through a little bit. So that's a place where they have an opportunity to really think about it. So then they said, what's working? And you will notice with every one of these, we ask you to fill out the, your, the questions and then we say, What's working? Because you're going to build on success. I love the fact that they have high attendance at their annual conference. 
Then we say, okay, so what do you think's not working? Where do you see potentially some issues? And I love this is they said, well, you know, we're, we're lagging a little bit on retention and, and engagement. And they said, you know, even though people are attending our annual conference, you know, the, the virtual, the, excuse me, the, the monthly ones aren't getting. Ah, so do you see the questions beginning to come up in my mind? Um, and then this idea of more chapter members need to have national memberships. Why is that? Well, to be honest with you, what we have found in all of the membership stats is that the if a dual member is a member that is more active. So it's kind of a, um, when you join both, you see a you, you see a richer value proposition across the board. Now, Take a look at four and five, because inevitably some things that are not working are really out of our control. So as I said, I'm going to add some little some stuff here. We've got that is kind of good, but we have an opportunity to change. But it really, to my mind, was the government agencies and the fact that we have an opportunity to increase membership, membership volunteerism and engagement. So if four and five are an issue and it looks like increasing membership is going to help with that, that's where the goals come in. And I jumped ahead, but let me just say that the part of what they did on the what and on what's working, what's not working is then jump in and talk about their goals. I'm moving my, my chats and my windows around a little bit. Keep the chats coming. I'm just going to move it out of my way here. Um, the last thing I want to show you is uh, part of this process is, uh, you know, what's working, what's not working, what are our goals? And then I love this section, questions and notes. This is where your board can begin to identify what it doesn't know and can begin to identify potential resources as you look at all these other pieces. And I really loved how on their questions and notes, they asked have other chapters struggled with getting in governmental entities to allow their members to attend and realize the value of NIGP? And what tactics are you using? So now what they're doing is they're allowing in this tool, they're allowing this tool to tell them, where do we build on success? Where do we look for new ideas? Do we have an uncontrollable challenge? And if we do, is there a question or a, someone else we should reach out to rather than spinning our own wheels? I'd love to see if anybody's got this same situation where government agencies are cut training and um, maybe you have an office of state procurement that's not particularly supportive. Anybody else have any of those? Peggy, I'm Amber, who has got her hand raised and this is um, oh, her dashboard. So Amber, you want to chime in? Please. Let me unmute. There we go. Yeah, I was going to um, say that um, we actually use this dashboard to address four and five. Um, we got a new we got a new um, office of state procurement director in um, the previous one was not supportive at all. So we got a new one who was the two one two uh, uh, times ago. And so we really leveraged that relationship and built that relationship with him. And then um he we uh, actually are giving him and two other offices of state procurement members free uh registration to conference so that they can uh come and then they also are getting speaking slots and all of those sorts of things so we're really trying to bring them in and get them involved and with that we gave them free membership for a year so that they will they'll get that membership renewal email and hopefully renew um, and then the other thing that we did is we, in our budget, uh, for this year created, uh, a line item for subsidizing classes. So what we've done is, and, and I've actually, we did it October. We've got another one in February and we've got one in June that we've, um, scheduled as far as professional development classes that we are, um, subsidizing those classes for our members because um, they don't have the training and development budget to be able to pay for it. So that that has and we've like we filled the class for February already. 
Mm-hmm. So I, I, I am like, thank you, thank you, thank you. I didn't want to put you on the spot, but I'm so glad you agreed to allow yourself to be put on the spot. So what I love and 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 I think that's really neat um, is what Amber has just been ex- telling us is that the dashboard allowed you sort of to get a little bit more focus and to say, what can we do? And then this opportunity, because it was top of mind, the opportunity of the shift of the of the of the staff person allowed you to jump on it. But then I love um, Amber, you saying, and now we know that one of our things for the budget this year is subsidized registration. I mean, you you then took something and you realized if we if we gave them free or somehow subsidizing, we're going to be able to keep that commitment. Mm-hmm. So would you say that's the power of the dashboard and just helping to guide the conversation a little bit? Absolutely. Yeah. It gives you a moment. I mean, all of us need that moment, whether we journal or whatever, where you sit down and you look at things and you reflect about, you know, what's going on, what's working, what's not working. So I love the fact that you use the 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 um, the analogy to journaling, because that's really what this is. I mean, we ask the questions where you can click a button, but we really I think that the the coolest part, in my humble opinion, is the open-ended, what's working, what's not, what are our goals, what are our questions? Peggy, can I jump in too? Having looked at all the dashboards last year, this is an area where I don't think the chapters took full advantage of this. And I'm so glad that Amber shared because I think us saying for you to not be a single person to fill this out, to take this to your board and discuss it, then allows you to fill in as a group. What do we think is working? What's not? And then it puts these questions and notes for action Mm -hmm. to be a little bit more prevalent with the board and not just sitting with a single person and their thoughts and concepts, but as a board. But Amber, I think this is awesome. This shows exactly the power of of sitting down, taking that moment and kind of mapping out these four areas um, and how to use that to make some changes within the chapter. And I, I, you know, I know that we have to be careful about what we say or what we ask of vendors, but sometimes that's what somebody saying they, you know, vendor partnerships. Sometimes you have to help the vendors understand the unique uh, way that you're supporting the industry. And I'm not, you, you probably would get into trouble if you said, oh, buy the registrations. But if you said, we're putting together this conference and your support allows us to give support, right? Allows us to build a better um, program that'll pull in together. And given how state budgets are so lean, it's really important for us to be able to create that value. All of a sudden, there's a real, there's a, there, they feel like they're helping the profession. So I think this is the other part about this too, is how you can have some different conversations, which is really, which I think is really, really important. And I saw that at least one of the person said that this whole idea of the lean budget is um, showing up. Two people said, yeah, it's showing up. So I think it'd be great for us, maybe, um, uh, Jennifer, when we are in person and one of our following um, uh, follow-ups is going to be like, how do we help you deal with the fact that there are lean budgets? You know, how do we help you really push the, um, the value forward? So just as they've done this, they went through they journaled, love that. They created their thing. And now they can have an co- opportunity just to really say, well, what's next? Well, this is where IDing uh, uh, the gaps in the information becomes, in my opinion, um, really important. So one of the things that I, when I was looking at this and and I'm thinking about this, well, what what would I want to ask? What, what are the gaps I think? And one of the gaps I had in my own mind was, okay, they've cut the budget for professional development. Um, On what basis are they releasing any of those funds? Like what kind of professional development are are agencies willing, if anything, to spend money on? If they cut this, are they cutting travel as well? In other words, get out of the office. In other words, if we switch to virtual, would the answer be yes? So it's kind of like, let me find out more about what this cut really means and where there are some windows that might be might be open for us. And then the other thing is, I thought it was really interesting that the that Amber, you and your group noticed that the annual conference is pulling people in, but it's the monthlies that aren't getting the same energy. I think I would, my my question was, okay, 
who's coming to the monthlies right now? Are they a different profile than the people that are coming to the conference? And maybe the monthlies have a different audience. And if they had a different audience, how might we use that time differently? Or if it's because folks really want to get a big rush in a room and the rest of the time they just want to get information, maybe I don't need that many monthlies. So the, the I would want to look at the profile to see that there's difference. And where you see folks coming to the monthly, I would then want to ask them the question, not how did you like the monthly, but what was your takeaway? What did you get from this? Because now you it could be a communications or it could be a, uh, a disconnect on what people think the value of the monthly is. Now it gives you an opportunity to hone in on what you want to do with those monthlies. But it also gives you an opportunity to, um, to maybe create the communications. One of the questions that I frankly, I'm just going to say it right out loud, think is a waste of time question is for you to ask, anything around what day would you prefer what time would you prefer look at your look at your um your 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 track record at what and what's pulling it people will answer those questions and they'll answer the questions all over the board and you'll be you're certain it's going to be a Tuesday at noon and then you don't sell Tuesday at noon it was because that particular Tuesday was not good <laughs> so use your questions to get to the real gaps in information, i.e., why would why did you come to this and what did you take away, is a much more effective question than is the day the right day. From there, you have the opportunity to say, all right, are there any trends that I need to be aware of? So I love the fact that Amber's group noted the trend of the shift in the budgets for professional development. That's a very real trend. We could also look at trends in the membership space, right? We spent some time talking about this last year, but I love how um, Megan Loist, who's a Gen Z venture capitalist, how she explained what is the value of member communities. And she talks about the value of member communities is not the list of things, right? It's not all the amenities. It's the people you have access to and the fact that thou, those people will help you level up. Now, what I love about this is that she's really talking about the fact that the community, the chapter is about the community. It's about the people, the relationships, the connections. And sometimes we lead with what we're going to give them instead of lead with what they're going to get. Let me say it one more time. We lead with what we're going to give them. We don't lead with what they're going to get. And what they want, so they tell us, and this is a Gen Z, so this is the, this is the next gen coming in, is they want to have their tribe. They want to know that they've got people who can support them as they level up. And a lot of the folks that are coming into the profession are looking for those mentors. And NIGP nationally and in the chapter, you are the go-to, right, for career development. So this is this really important to help them with the tribe. Secondly, digital, 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 digital. Um, uh, let me actually, in chat, Tell me when you're reading for pleasure, not reading for work, reading for pleasure. Are you mostly ebook, mostly paper, mostly audiobook? And if you're really a mix, put mix. Paper, ebook, paper. Okay, keep coming. Mix, mix, ebook. And do you have any audio people? Audiobook, there we go. <laughs> Excellent. Now, just look at this. And, and I, I love it. Ma says ebook or audio. Paper's not going away, but digital is a preference for so many of us. 97% of American adults have a cell phone. And of them, 86% say they get news from their smartphone, computer, or tablet often or sometimes. Think about that shift, right? Now, what's also interesting about that shift, um, and go ahead, put it in your, how many people in this digital room, in this virtual room, 
still get a paper newspaper delivered, a paper newspaper delivered. You. <laughs> so here's the deal. We used to, up until a month ago, we got our renewal. It was so expensive for us to keep it. So instead, my husband bought us two digital readers and a digital subscription. And now I read it whenever I want to. And I read it on my tablet. Yes. Okay. Be quick. I love that. My magazines are truly still in paper, but not the newspaper. So digital, digital, digital. So how are we, and those of you that are going to Club Express or have built a really robust website and digital presence, you're there. But how are we making it easy for folks to find us? And the third trend, you heard me say it before. I'm going to continue to say it. The numbers still say virtual is here to stay. Not 100% virtual. People still want to get back in when they can. But don't expect you're going to have the same attendance at the same frequency that you had before because people are looking forward to engage. 74% 74, 74 of the members in this survey said they will engage virtually at least some of the time. All right. So you look at trends and you say, okay, we're doing these monthly meetings. Now, I think I loved, and, and, and Amber cannot, I can see her picture, but I believe you said that you were doing some hybrid, right? So you were, you were already getting some in. So when you look at these trends, it's not like you walk away from something, but you say, okay, how do we create the mix? How do we let these trends help us make a decision, right? Oh, I, Desiree, I just saw yours only to start the fireplace. <laughs> so anyway, so then the next step that you're going to do is you're going to say, let me gather some success stories, right? Just like Amber did and her board did, she's going to get tired of me saying her name all this time, but just like her group did, they said, what, who can we learn from? What I love about this is if you know more specifically the question you can ask, you got people to call. You got people to call to give you connections. And part of the beautiful thing about the people to call is that they can connect you with other chapters in the same scenario or other chapters that are succeeding in places. They can also connect you to folks that can give you new ideas. Yes, Les, thank you. Exactly. So who are you going to call? So first and foremost, your chapter ambassadors. Do I have any chapter ambassadors on? If you, if I have any chapter ambassadors on today, go ahead and give me your thumbs up. Yes, there we go. And go ahead and tell me as a chapter ambassador, what is the funnest thing that you did in 2023 as a chapter ambassador? Just put that in there. What's a fun thing about being a chapter ambassador? Come on now. I know there were some fun things. So let's let's share right now. <laughs> so you can call your 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 um you can call your chapter ambassador and listen, there's a link and you'll get these slides. There's actually a form for you to go ahead and get chapter ambassadors. Now, I'm going to mention chapter ambassadors first. Chapter ambassadors have a day job. We get it. We understand hanging out with all the chapter ambassadors. Yay, Joe. <laughs> You do have staff. And this is where I get a chance to say, Caitlin Mankin, can you go make sure you're on video for the moment so I can give you a shout out? Um, I don't know how many of you have met Caitlin. Is she still here? Can we can we give her a shout out? I was having some trouble, sorry. Nope. Say hi and say how long you've been at NIGP. Hi, so I have been with NIGP for I think three years in September. Um, I started in customer care and then this year I switched over to be program support for the chapters. Yay. So everybody say <laughs> hi in, um, say hi and chat to Caitlin and you've got her email address so you can actually give her a, um, an email hi as well. So the can chapter, you, yes. Can I add one more thing to this list of resources? Mm -hmm. Cause I'm not sure it's in another slide. Cause I want to go back to you, to your ask for other people and ask for mm -hmm. support. There's an incredible resource on um, our Insight community that is just for chapter leaders. Um, well, this is our online oh, resource. Right? It's, it's building this. But um, 
it is a community of just chapter leaders. It's something you, um, I know a lot of you are new in your chapter positions and roles. And I always try to encourage you to ask those questions there because I think we just showed through the chat, the issue Amber was having, somebody else says, well, I think this is why we can't get people to join either. So ask those questions in that chapter leaders insight community to get that discussions going because I guarantee you somebody will be able to share we've tried this or treat, we tried that. So um, outside of staff, ambassadors, myself, there is each other and a platform we have in place for you guys to go to each other. Oh, and Caitlin right there. Thank you, Caitlin. Threw in the link to the community home, which is great. And I wanted to plug the fact that also go to the chapter online resource library because People that have succeeded in lots of different ways have put some stuff up there. And even if it doesn't work for you like right away or exactly how it is, it is going to help you um, come up with some new ideas. So chapter ambassadors, cool volunteers, lovely staff, including the wonderful Caitlin, now part of this team, online resources, and drum roll, please, the subject matter experts, panel or team, which you're going to get more information on at the Chapter Academy. Super excited to roll this out. And this is an opportunity for you if you have a specific issue to get matched with somebody who can actually work with your chapter. Now, I'm going to say work with your chapter, but maybe you as the president, when I ask, like, I just need to, I need to understand, I want to make sure I understand my role better. You could go to your chapter ambassador, you could go to Jennifer, but you could also say, hey, is there a subject matter expert about how I really create the experience I want to? So you're not alone, you're not alone. And by taking that step that we just talked about, which quite frankly, was this idea of gather success stories, gather ideas, lots of places for you to do that. And so what we've done here with this particular tool is allowed you to kind of work through a process where you have that opportunity to now reach out. The next step is going to be to gather any additional information that you need. Now, I like to maybe um, take just a few extra minutes here because I think I mentioned to you as I was talking about the questions that came up for me when I looked at the, um, the, 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 the one chapter. And I actually, I've looked at all of the, the, the member engagement um, question, uh, comments that came back in the chapter dashboard. And I really think that a large part of what's holding us back is two things. One is not knowing what's really going on in our chapters. And secondly, making assumptions we know the answers of what our members are thinking or needing. Yes, you are one of them. Yes, you are in procurement. Yes, your members are in procurement. But you have, you're at a different level. You're a volunteer leader. You're at a different level. So we really have to make sure that we're not thinking that the answers we have to questions and our desire to do certain connection points with our chapter is the same across the system. So it's really important that we make sure that we ask all of the questions. And to that end, I wanna do one more poll here. Let me get my polls up. My screen is being a little difficult, there we go. I have too many things open for you all today. All right, I'd like to know, oh, it's interesting. It won't let me launch. Somebody already launched the poll? Nope. You have a previous poll open. Oh, thank you. There we go, thank you. I can't see my screen was gone. <laughs> How about, let's see. There we go, thank you. I didn't know who spoke to me, but I want to thank you 100%. Okay. Sorry, it showed up for two seconds and then it disappeared on me. Unless, was that just me? Oh, I don't know. It disappeared on me too. I didn't see it. Yeah. Okay, let's try it again. It disappeared. Oh, bummer. It did. You're right. I'm going to relaunch the poll. Let's see if I can do this. Is it still back? Yep, it's back now. Yes. 
See, Ginny, this is the kind of things I need people to talk. I love it. And don't we love it when technology works? Yes. I love this. Carolyn, it disappeared. Michelle, it's back. <laughs> I think we should just, we do a screen grab of just those two, which would be yep. kind of fun. <laughs> All right. So individual member attendance. This means I can look at somebody and I can say they attended these events. Volunteerism is I'm tracking who's actually working for the organization. Member history is like, how long has this person been a member? If you know any other information, that's good too. But knowing their track record, right? Activity participation. Did an individual do something with this organization? Member demographics. This is where I don't know what you guys are collecting. If you're collecting around um, any of the, the, the social um, uh, and um, age and any of those elements of those demographics, or even if you're connecting around the fact that I know that this agency is in a rural area versus a um, urban area. So wh whatever those demographics are that help you sort of have a sense of your profile of your member. Website stats, this is what are visits, who's clicking through, what's being downloaded. Email stats, same things, Who's who's how many opens, how many click throughs. Um, how many actions based on my email? And let me put other because there may be something else uh, that you are collecting that um, uh, that I didn't put here. So if you'd say other, please feel free to put the other descriptor in the chat so we can um, so we can know. And Peggy, for those of you who have been around a while, I am I'm always... sorry. See you next time, Polly. Anyway, go ahead. I have Thank always... you. Um, stress the importance of some other data to be collected of your membership. We mm -hmm. talk so much about knowing, you know, uh, um, where they work, maybe how long certifications, but when you want to tie things into volunteerism, it's also nice to know things personally about your members as well. Um, and it can be Peggy's like distance, how far away are they, rural, are they in um, suburban, uh, do they like photography? Do they like golf? Because you will be amazed sometimes when you're looking to put some new things in place and want to get volunteers, how nice it is to have data to be like, I need somebody to take pictures and you've captured some of that. Guess what? That person who likes to take photography, take photos, probably is going to be willing to volunteer for your next event to take some group photos. So I always say during your renewal process, or when you um, get new members is ask some of those personal hobbies, what things like they like to do and to start gathering that type of data as well. Right. And uh, Jennifer, to that point, a great place is the new member, um, the new member welcome to do all of that. And then the, and the new member onboarding or, and I like to say the, the, when you go through your retention cycle, all the new people that re renew go, Hey, I'd love to know a little bit more about you. Uh, and, and you can do this lots of different ways. You can create a, a you know, a doodle form and collect information, put it down in a um, in an Excel spreadsheet and then tie it back to um, the member itself. So there's lots of different ways you can do that. But having that information is critical. Having what your individual member is attending and how they're touching your organization is really critical. Because this is where you can begin to build profiles that help you create services that drive member engagement. And I love the fact that one of the others that's listed in the um, in uh, chat is we track social media members and hits. Because a lot of stuff is happening on social. I mean, LinkedIn is a buzz right now. I don't know if you guys have noticed this. I don't know what's uh, LinkedIn has suddenly gotten like. I mean, it, it, it's I've had more act, seen more activity there. And that's a great place because it's a professional network. You're not trying to um, go through the hurdles of Facebook. And I'm not saying anything about Facebook or Instagram. Um, I, I just came back from two different chapter training programs and WhatsApp was a was and Discord. WhatsApp and Discord have become two things we're seeing chapters really optimize for engaging from a digital perspective um, members across the, the board. So the fact that you're tracking and understand social media is really good. Peggy, for those who may have not heard, do you know a little bit about WhatsApp and Discord and, and the functionality of those? 
So both of them are creating communities right. um, and people are opting in, they're private. And um, with WhatsApp, the information goes away. Um, so, and uh, I see someone uses connects me. Um, so it, they are, think of them as chat platforms. Discord's got some more, um, uh, some more bells and whistles uh, than WhatsApp. I have seen, um, you know, what I've seen, uh, or and in the last um, the last two sessions, a lot of people talked about using WhatsApp and um, Discord for smaller subgroups, so like the the next generation or the um, in one particular case, it was they uh, created one around everybody that was interested in a particular topic. So it's nice way of finding another way to connect. Here we got Caitlin uses Discord for book clubs and loves it. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Les! Thank you for that um, for that uh, shout out there on on Club Express. Um, so so let me ask this question, um, Caitlin. Uh, since you can I can I ask you just to you don't have to if you if if you prefer not to. But I'd love for you just to jump on maybe audio and talk a little bit about how you use Discord for, for book clubs. And do you see it as a possibility for a, a small group in um, in your chapter? Um, so for book clubs, we use the voice channels when we want to get together and have more of like a live thing yes. going. Um, we do have a lot of sub channels. So for like a specific book or like if people want to talk about spoilers you know we'll have something yep. for that too nice. um and you can also categorize people and you can categorize yourself so you can have kind of moderators you can have people that have different roles within the um community kind of thing um i think discord has a lot of options that could yeah. be valuable to chapters and mm -hmm. i think it's free unless you pay for like a premium subscription so that's a good option too yeah perfect I love it. So here's a, you know, for anybody that's interested in just, Caitlin, Kate, Kate, you don't mind if somebody on the call reaches out, right? And says, hey, tell me more about this. Of course, please okay. email me, call yeah. me, whatever you need. So that's the thing is um, there's lots of new technology. You don't have to know them all. Um, ask around in your membership. In fact, another great uh, a poll in an, in an annual conference at the opening session, do a poll of which of these do you use? And then maybe say, okay, everybody that uses Discord, go over here. Everybody that uses WhatsApp, go over here. And just have a little bit of a conversation and see where you can go with that. The, um, the reason why we're asking here what data you collect is because in the data you don't collect may be the answer. The data you don't collect, the answer may reside. And so under member demographics, for example, as you're doing the profile of who comes to an annual conference versus the profile that comes to a, a monthly meeting versus the person who's been a member forever but doesn't come to anything, right? You may find that something about the member demographics fills in the picture. And now you can create something that's going to make a difference. I told the story before, and I'll repeat it right now, the two different stories from two different chapters. The first chapter, when they did their profile, they found out that there was a whole group of people who were not joiners. Like they did not want to come to an event or a meeting. They were the people who came and used the, what I'm going to refer to as the social groups or the book clubs. They were the groups that wanted to get together and have a, and have like a six week conversation on a particular topic. They were not going to come to a meeting. They were a profile. And as we looked at the profile, we found that, they tended to be more, in this particular case, solo operators. So they didn't have a lot of staff, right? So that meant getting out was more difficult, right? They tended to be people, interestingly, who had, um, you know, they had a they had a larger uh, they had a larger responsibility, but they tended to focus very specifically in one or two disciplines, right? So in other words, instead of being really across, they had a focus area that was really important, um, and then. Um, number three is they indicated that they had a preference for small group activity. Already, that just tells you that that profile, you're going to throw the emails and they're going to delete the emails for the big event, but they're going to pay attention to the small event. 
Let me end the poll here and share the results so you can see. Excellent. All right. So what can you do with this data? It, as I'm going to just go through this one more time, I think it allows you to create that profile of who's attending and not attending. It's going to allow you to ask the question, how else are members connecting? It's gonna allow you to say, what percentage of members connected in the past year? That's a goal setting. If you had 10% of your members connecting last year and you recognize it's 10, you're not gonna to try to double that down. You're gonna say, how can we make some incremental change? A really, really important question is, what other associations or resources are members tapping locally? And this could surprise you. I remember talking a while back to the uh, medical association and talking to their state groups. And um, one of them was really shocked to find out that there had been a private um, uh, online community for doctors to share. And they couldn't figure out why they were losing kind of the engagement until they found out that there was this really much smaller trusted circle of people that were connecting. So what other associations or resources do members tap locally? And then I think this is a question we don't always ask. What do members need tomorrow? Like we kind of know what the issues are of the day oftentimes. And sometimes you know what you might need. Remember, they aren't sitting in your seat, right? And you're not sitting in their seat. So being able to anticipate what members need tomorrow could be, could be really valuable. So an example of that is with an organization that I recently was talking with, one of their chapters, um, they found that there was uh, something percolating in the legislative arena, okay? It was percolating, didn't know where it was gonna go, what it was gonna be, but they knew that something was going to come and they also knew that it was going to be a new thing and a little bit controversial and there was a pro or con. So they started beginning to talk about that particular item in a way that said, wow, it looks like this is gonna be impactful for us coming down the road. We don't know, but who's done something? Who's thinking about this? What do you need? What are the questions you have about this? And then they built a couple of virtual uh, conversations around it. So they could have just said, you know, what, what, what did we do last year and should we do it again? Or what's different that they need this year? So it's, it's really valuable for you to go back to that data, uh, to begin to talk to some folks. One of the things with that first question, what's the profile of those attending and not attending, is we tend to talk to the people that are attending and complain about the people that aren't attending, right? And we sit at a meeting and we say, I don't know why so-and-so is not here. So-and-so never comes here, right? What if we called so-and-so is never coming up and not say, why aren't you coming? But saying, hey, How's it going? What are you working on? What's a big issue for you? Well, how do you how do you handle that? How do you handle that issue? They're going to tell you, right? And so when you do that, now you get a better understanding of why people aren't coming instead of guessing, sitting around a table and guessing. All right. This is where you have to decide um Okay, where are we going to land? And this is where I really want you to lean on your chapter ambassador in large part because your chapter ambassador is working with you and the other chapters in your region. They sort of have a sense of the flow of things in that region. And so rather than saying, I'm going to increase my engagement by 50% or I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to take this meeting and I'm going to I'm going to have it have a 25% revenue gain. Have a talk with the chapter ambassador and say, what is, you know, what are you seeing? We want to benchmark against the folks that are succeeding, but we want to make sure that we're setting goals that are achievable, a little bit of a stretch, but achievable. And if they're achievable, then I can begin to decide what action is going to make a difference. So this is where you can lean on your chapter ambassador. 
And once you've decided the ID metrics, this is where the fun really comes in. Now you'll notice I said, what are your success metrics? What would your goals be? Now discuss the options, right? Where do I want to go? And then make sure the options are going to get you there. One of the things that's going to help you get outside your own box on this is for you to begin to have a conversation with the board or the task force or the committee in which you say things like, what are our options, including those that are less preferable, right? So that we tend to glam to the thing either that feels comfortable or that we think will be the best. Well, let's put all the options on the table. What, what are the options that we don't even like? Just put those on the table and let's ask why we don't like them. And let's ask what would make us like them, right? Secondly, ask ourselves, what is our data around this belief? So if we believe members only want to be in person, what is our data around this belief? Is that belief even accurate anymore? Because part of what we found is that oftentimes we're riding on what the chapter did in the last five years or whatever the memory is on the board, right? And so we begin to say that this is a truism. We begin to say, our members don't go on social media. Our members would never go on Discord. Why? Well, because they didn't pick up on our LinkedIn group. Okay, but that's not a data point. That's an impression of something that happened. So if we don't have a data point, is it possible that it's changed and we need to leave that belief behind? And that gets to this question, if that belief still isn't true, then what is? And then we've talked about this. I always like to keep bringing this up. You are not a silo. You're, you know, you have lots of other people. Everybody, most of the group, most of the group, all but five of the reporting chapters are struggling with how do we think about member involvement different? We're going to hear about something towards the end in just a little bit about how we're going to make sure we share what successes have worked on this. And lastly, I like to mention to folks that we get we as leaders get in to, um, well, we get into circles with ourselves, right? And a couple of the pitfalls we run into when we're trying to be a little bit more out there is first of all, we limit ourselves. Uh, we rarely consider more than two options. We say we're gonna do this or we're not gonna do this, or we're gonna do it this way or we're gonna do it this way. Um, and I would tell you that there's been some really cool science around this. Um, they found that 52% of the time in business, the two option um, exclusive led to unfavorable results. 52% of the time in this particular business study, just having two options led to unfavorable results. Interesting, huh? So maybe there's a real advantage to us saying, let's put a third option on and then play with all three. The other one is um, uh, we're blinded by the short-term emotion of making a decision. I feel strongly about this right now and let's make the decision and move on. And I want us to really every time to say um, the, we're resistant to change at this point because we feel strongly about the need to get this going and getting done. Can we roll back for just a moment and look at the data? And the last thing that we fall into is a false sense of security, of, of certainty, false sense of certainty. Another study said that when doctors said that they were 99% sure, they were wrong 40% of the time. When college students said they were 99% sure, they were wrong 27% of the time. The more certain you are about something, just ask yourself, what if that's not the case? What if that's not the case? All right. You've discussed the options. Now all that's left is action. All that's left is action. And now you have the opportunity to try something out. And when you try something out to say, did it work? Didn't it work? And go back through the process. 
So taking a look at this, let me do a pause. And thank you, Lori. Let me do a, uh, a, a, a pause and ask, what, what's relevant to you right now? What's relevant to you now? Anything that you have um, an observation about, an aha, a question, anything, put it in chat or raise your hand. Let's get some conversation. And as you're looking at these seven steps, is there one step that you really find interesting or intriguing? There's one part of this that you think is really cool. Peggy, is everybody, as everybody is doing that, I also just want to let everybody know that um, we will be posting the recording mm -hmm. um, links. People have asked for that. Caitlin and I are going to put together a cheat sheet on the dashboard and exporting that and filling that in. Um, and we will get that all to you, everybody, in the next week with a link that we'll start putting on the website with all the recordings and resources that we talk about. So all of that will be coming to everybody um, later on. Okay, two questions in chat. Go ahead, fire away, folks, answer. After COVID, are you offering more scholarship dollars? Are you charging for your memberships? Are you offering more scholarship dollars or are you um, or are you charging for membership? So go ahead and answer that. And um, Jennifer, can we make a point of asking that question to next week on the poll or next month on the polls? About membership dollars. About charging for members and more scholarships. Okay, yep. So Chandra, that is a great question. And I'm going to suggest to you, when you go back and you have the conversation with the folks that aren't coming, that's where you begin to get some information about what they want. And I think that the big, the big um, miss that we make is the belief that to be active in the chapter, you have to show up at meetings. Mm -hmm. To be active in the chapter, it's about coming to meetings. And I'm going to suggest to you that that is not, that's not resonating with members anymore. I want, there's got to be value to the chapter beyond attending. I'm loving the fact that you all are jumping in on the questions. So that actually gives me an opportunity to say, if you draw members into the process of developing your, your services, you have a greater likelihood, a greater likelihood of being able to, um, to uh, get them to buy into coming. So surveys, online collaboration, whiteboards, polling, question mark, however you can do that is a great way to do that. Okay. Let's bring this conversation home. Thank you. Ah, good, good confirmation conversation coming in here on lots of on those two questions. Keep them coming. Let's take this home. Some of you, a good portion of you, are going to be at the in-person experience. And I want to make sure that you know where we're going to take this member engagement conversation to the next level in Houston. I'm going to suggest that the degree that you can, before you get there, at least look at the chapter dashboard and begin to fill in the what's working, what's not working and the questions, right? I want you to come ready to know what questions you wanna ask your peers, right? Secondly, I would like the board to answer these questions. And this could be like an email, or a little quick poll, but, but what are your top priorities for 24? How will you, uh, how will we track, measure, and and uh, track progress and measure? And what are our areas for improvement? Three, I would love for you to bring as many stats as you can, so we can play with that. So again, we're not just spinning ideas, but we're spinning ideas where we have the opportunity to ask: Is our belief behind that idea really still relevant? And finally. I have to tell you, the Thursday kickoff is where all the fun starts. So make sure you're coming in in time to get there with us. We have got competitions. We have got some fun activities. We have got all kinds of, of opportunities for you to get to know each other. And the bonus opportunity is 
bring in your brag flyer. I started at the beginning and you all said you like braggers more than complainers. So don't bring your complaints to the academy. Bring your brag so we can build on it. Here's the deal and you're going to get more ideas. We're going to create a Hall of Fame idea swap. It is going to be your flyers standing up. You're going to get to see them and everybody gets to vote. And I'm just suggesting that there could be a prize for the ideas that get the most votes. So it is your opportunity to brag about what you've done as well as see what everybody else is bragging about. So more details are going to come. We're going to ask for you to send these in advance if you can. And this is an opportunity for us all to build from each other's successes. Okay. The dashboard, guys, is a tool for decision-making that drives success. And today's conversation was intended to help you see it just as that and know how to work it. Now, I'm looking at my clock and I had a feeling there was a possibility that we could have some time at the end. And you have one of two options. I can give this time back to you and you can go get on the phone with your board and start asking questions. Or we can open up the, the, um, the, the lines right now and take any and all questions. So, wanna talk? Oh, I love this. <laughs> Only one item? No, no. Bring your brags. I don't care. You've got five of them. Bring the five brags. <laughs> yeah, and let me just add a little bit about that. You know, we're not looking for anything fancy. You don't need to have a graphic designer and stuff like that. Um, this is actually a great segue into the outstanding awards when we ask you to highlight and submit your chapters, um, programs, and activities that you do. We want, while there is, this is a brag and there is a competition, this is just another opportunity for you all to share something you do well with your chapter. Um, and think about this is that, you know, it may be something that you do all the time and you maybe even take for granted, but it might be something unique and different for another chapter. So even those small things that you have great success at your quarterly membership meetings, what is it that you do? How do you market? How do you come up with your topics? Share that in a one pager that may give some other ideas to other chapters. So bring as many as you like and we'll display them. Um, and then we'll have them, uh, again, send them to me prior if you can, but we'll collect them all as resources. We'll drop them in the resource library, have them to send out to everybody, but would love to see as many of those great ideas. Yep, excellent. Any other questions? I totally love, and the question was, we love to start offering scholarships for one board member a year to attend the forum. Jen, Jennifer, we've got quite a few chapters that are investing in getting um, in getting the, in getting more people at the academy, right? You know, that's a very common thing that we're seeing chapters do now is that in their budget or even as an incentive to get some people to mm -hmm. run for leadership is that's a perk is that part of their attendance at forum is paid for, even if it's just the registration, maybe it's not the whole thing, not all travel, maybe it's just hotel and, and registration, but that's become a very big thing for chapters to be offering as a perk for their time and commitment for leadership of your chapter. So very kind of in the norm now, and even growing with scholarship programs is that there's scholarships to attend forum or classes. Um, so yeah, a lot of that going on. And let's add, when you come to the leadership, moment, unlike the standalone chapter academy, where it was always about the chapter, this is a professional development um, program. So you have the opportunity to sell it to the powers that be back at the office. This is a professional development that's going to support your need for me to be as best I can in my job, as well as as well as well um, take care of that. Um can we share a, a sample document we created for our members that we can? Yes, yeah, sure, absolutely. absolutely Jenny. Um, we'll have them, we're gonna have them in a little stand. We can do a page behind it. So if you wanna do a write up and then a sample of it, that would be wonderful to share. So, I mean, we're not looking for a five or 10 docu page document here, but something very easy um, that we can display on tables. Nicole, I love it. Thank you for adding that. I actually have seen more and more people do that as part of 
Um, a benefit if attending a meeting is that they have a professional photographer to do those headshots. People are looking now that you said LinkedIn has become a big deal is to kind of to offer that. It can be expensive to get a sitting to do headshots, glam shots, as they were called back it's in the day. It's a great day. sponsorship opportunity, too, by the way. Absolutely, guys. Great sponsorship yeah. opportunity. All right, Jennifer, I think we should give them 10 minutes back in their day that they don't have to tell anybody about. Absolutely. You pretend you're still on this <laughs> webinar, okay? Yep. Um, but let's give you 10 minutes back. Um, if there's any additional questions, just holler, but we're gonna let you all, those of you that um, uh, would like to have that gift, to, to go ahead and cash that gift in, um, do know that as Jen said, we're going to get you, we're going to make sure that you got uh, the, the tidbits from the chat. You're going to get the, you're going to get the recording. You're going to get the slide deck and you're going to get a follow-up information about the brag sheet and about, um, Ashboards. know before you go, uh, and boot camp, how to build your own February 13th. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. We'll be in touch soon with an email with a lot of stuff for you. Thank you. See you guys in person soon. Thank you.